constipation, it's an exciting topic, but we know that it impacts anywhere from 2 to 26.9% of the adult population here in the United States. And I'm always surprised at how normal people assume that it is. It isn't. It's defined as three or fewer bowel movements per week. There can be many causes, but they can be defined from simple to more concerning. So first and foremost, dehydration, very common for chronic dehydration to provoke constipation, as well as underlying food sensitivities, things like dairy, specific types of meats, or healthy fats, especially if you've got an underlying gallbladder issue, gut imbalances, infections, candida, or SIBO can mitigate constipation. Specific medications like narcotics, antibiotics, antihypertensives like clonidine or calcium channel blockers, as well as diuretics, anti-seizure medication, antidepressants, and antacids can all drive this symptom, as well as supplements as simple as iron. Stress. I bet many of you had no idea that stress can be a cause of constipation. Well, let's be clear. We have to be in our parasympathetic rest and repose side of our brains in order to poop. It's that simple. Physical inactivity, so if someone's been recently ill or is not as physically active, uh, we actually need movement to get things literally moving along in our digestive system. Those that ignore the need to defecate, I think this can be a problem with children, but also probably shift workers as well. I think about those with eating disorders, irritable bowel syndrome that are prone to constipation. Again, I mentioned poor gallbladder function, too low insufficient hydrochloric acid or digestive enzymes, and more concerning colorectal issues or tumors. Now, I want to be very clear. It's important before you start trying to address this that you see your healthcare provider if you're dealing with chronic constipation to determine what needs to be done next. Most of the reasons are fairly benign, but as I mentioned before, there can be some that require medical attention. For me personally, once someone's already had their evaluations, I like to start with a combination of lifestyle strategies and testing. So things like the DNA-based stool test, the GI map, SIBO testing, the MRT, which is actually food sensitive testing, as well as more traditional labs like a complete blood count, complete metabolic panel, iron studies, a thyroid panel, and a vitamin D. When it comes to looking at ways to easily treat constipation, we think about things like hydration. Another underappreciated intervention, you want to consume half your body weight in filtered water daily, more if you're consuming caffeine or alcohol, and adding in electrolytes as well. Otherwise, you may spend most of your day urinating out the water you just consumed. Things like elimination diets, can be hugely helpful. So pulling out dairy from the diet, sometimes consuming lower fat foods to see if the gallbladder can kind of get itself reset, addressing gut imbalances. So if someone is, has a parasite, someone is dealing with SIBO or H. pylori, you want to address those things. Switching medications, again, in conjunction with your healthcare provider, addressing stress. I cannot emphasize this enough, you have to be in the parasympathetic rest and repose side of your brain. Otherwise, you are not going to be able to relax enough to have a bowel movement. You absolutely want to include physical activity into your lifestyle and you want to set aside time to poop daily. It could be that you get up a little earlier if you have small children or you go to the bathroom before you leave for work. Even implementing a squatty potty can be hugely helpful, I am told. And then last but not least, once you've done all of those other things, you can add in supplements. For some people, fiber can be highly beneficial if tolerated. It can act as a bulking agent and also helps increase stool weight and gut microbiome health. You want to aim for 25 to 40 grams daily. Again, don't start at that dose, but you want to go low and slow. And I like to add in combinations of other things like fresh ground chia and flax seeds as a start. You can actually throw these into a smoothie. You can put them over a salad and see how they work for you and what works best. You can also add additional things like fresh shaved beets, carrots, and artichoke hearts, which you know are very nourishing for the gallbladder, as well as the skins from apples or pears, which also add some additional fiber into the diet. Next is vitamin C. We know that it can support a healthy immune function, has some antioxidant benefits, but can also help with constipation due to its osmotic effect on the gut as it helps draw water into the colon. I like to start with whole food sources 
first. So things like citrus fruits, green leafy vegetables. And then if at all necessary, I will use a vitamin C product. I actually like Biotics Mixed Ascorbates Powder as well. And remember, you have to go low and slow with this product. So generally start with an eighth of a teaspoon. For many people, they need as little as an eighth of a teaspoon to a quarter teaspoon a day, and that will kind of keep things moving. Next is aloe vera. This is actually a form of athroquinone, an organic compound found in some plants. Now, generally I recommend people take this in juice form. It doesn't taste great, but can be a very effective way to get your bowels moving. And it has some beneficial anti-inflammatory components as well. Again, like the rest of these, go low and slow. Start with a quarter cup once a day to start. Next is MCT oil. You probably have heard a lot about this. It is very popular in the keto paleo community. You can use this in coffee and smoothies as a salad dressing or in cooking. But again, go low and slow. You want to avoid disaster pants. I usually recommend a quarter teaspoon, a half a teaspoon at most. This is actually a medium chain triglyceride, which helps promote a healthy gut and intestinal diversity. It can also help with healing those small intestine tight junctions. So if there's some concern for leaky gut, it can positively impact bacterial species in your colon and the ability to assimilate and absorb key nutrients. This means that it can help kill off bad bacteria, promote growth of healthy bacteria while addressing leaky gut or increased permeability of the small intestine. Next is Trifala. This is an actual Ayurvedic treatment and it's a powder of three fruits that are a natural laxative. You wanna start low and slow, start with half a teaspoon before bed in water and see how that works for you. It can also be beneficial to add in things like digestive enzymes, gallbladder, support or even hydrochloric acid if necessary and based on determination of all the other things that we've already talked about. So constipation does not have to be a chronic problem for you if you are diligent about determining the cause and addressing it proactively.